Hello everyone, today we're going to be covering factorization of polynomials with degree 3. So, if we're factorizing cubic polynomials. So polynomials of that form. Now there's two methods to do that. There's the kx method, which I'm going to be doing today. And then the other method is if we just divide by a factor, which I'll be covering in another video. Okay, first when we want to factorize we have to get everything equal to zero as we always do when we factorize. Now, the first thing we need to do to factorize something off degree 3 is that we need to guess a number that works. Now what I mean by that is that we need to guess a value of x that this side over here equals zero. So, we will try putting, um, let's say I know my uh, positive 1 will work, so let's put that in. So. Uh, I will guess that x is positive 1. So we'll see where I put positive 1 where x is, and I get minus 4, 1, plus 3. Let's see what is this equal to. It's 1 minus 4 plus 3, which is equal to 0. So I know that if I put minus 1 into this side of the equation, I will end up with 0. That means that positive 1 is a root. So if this was factorized uh, and positive 1 was a root, we would have the bracket x minus 1 in the solution. Because, and then we'd have something else here. This would say x is equal to positive 1 and x is equal to whatever happens in this corner here. Right? So now that we have this factor and we had to guess, there's no better way to do it. We're going to have to guess a number that works. Uh, now that we have this this um, equation here, we're going to find this. And that's where the kx method comes into play. Um, the other method is uh, dividing out the first factor, but you still need to guess the first factor. So, we're going to find this now. Okay, just remember this is what we're trying to solve. We'll keep this in the back of our mind for now. Just remember, with regular factorization, right? let's say x squared minus 4x plus 3 right this gives me x minus 3 x minus 1 is equal to 0 right so the regular factorization if I multiply the first number in the one bracket times the first well the first if I multiply the first term in the first bracket the X and the first term in this bracket right this and this gives me X squared which is my first term right so the first term and the first term gives me the first term and the same thing happens with the last term. If I took this and this and I multiply them together, I get 3, which is the same as the last term there. So we know that if we multiply the first term and the first term, and the last term and the last term, we end up with the numbers from our original unfactorized version. And we will be using this knowledge to do the cubic version. So, I already guessed my factor earlier. If you remember, I guessed x minus 1. Right? Now, my next bracket, I do not know what my next bracket is, right? But I know that the first number in my next bracket times by the first number in this bracket must give me that first term, x cubed. So, what ti x times what will give me x cubed? It is an x, it is an x squared, right? This middle term I do not know about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a placeholder. This is where this is why it's called the kx method. I'm going to call that kx. I know it should be an x because it'll be an x squared plus something x plus something. But I don't know what kx. So I'm going to call it k for now and I'm going to find out what it is later. But the last term I do know. I know that this number times the last term must give me the last number. 
as explained in the uh, the squared case in, in the case earlier. So minus 1 times what will give me 3? It'll give me minus 3. Okay, see, so x times x squared will give me x cubed, and minus 1 times minus 3 will give me 3. That's how we got these two numbers over here. The middle term we do not know. So let's multiply this guy out. We don't have to multiply the whole thing out when you're doing the method, but for explanation purposes you'll see what happens when you multiply the whole thing out. The, what we're trying to do is find out what k is. So multiplying this out will get x times x x q squared will give me x give me x cubed then x times kx will give me plus kx squared and then x times minus 3 will give me minus 3x now minus 1 times x squared gives me minus x squared minus 1 times kx gives me minus kx and minus 1 times gives me plus 3 equal to 0. So we need this to be the same as this for, for the equation to work because that's what we started with after we factorize and multiply out we should end up what we started with. That's how we're going to find out what k is. We're going to see, um, let's see, I have minus 3x plus kx so from the x term I have minus 3 minus k. I have minus 3 minus k x's, right? In my expanded out version. And in my original version, I have minus 4 x's. So these should be the same if this equation has to be the same as this equation. And now if I solve this, by taking this 3 across, I end up with minus k is equal to minus 1. So k is equal to 1. So k is equal to 1. Now that we have the value of k, we just need to substitute it into here, and then we'll factorize that last piece to get our fully factorized version. Another way I could have done this is we don't look at the x term, right? We could also have looked at the x squared term. The x squareds, I have kx squared minus uh, 1x squared. So I have kx squared minus 1x squared, and that must be equal to how many x squareds we had originally. And originally, I don't have any x squared, so I have 0x squared, right? And then taking the one across, I end up with k is equal to 1, as before. And these must be the same thing. If they're not the same thing, if you want to do a quick check for yourself that you didn't make a mistake somewhere, you can check that um, using the x squareds or using the x's must give you the same value of k. And if they don't, you have made a mistake somewhere, and you can go check if you didn't multiply a negative out correctly or something like that. So now that we know what k is, we can go... We can go here and we can say this is x minus 1, x squared plus x, because I'm putting k as 1 in there, minus 3 is equal to 0. So here we have the fully factorized version. I say fully factorized because in this case, this term does not factorize. So if this was, let's say, a 2, if there was a 2 here, then we'd be able to factorize this, and we would have to factorize it to get our answer. So, because that doesn't factorize, our answers are x is equal to minus 1, or positive 1, sorry, or x is equal to, equal to something out of the quadratic formula from this. So I'd have to say minus b plus or minus root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a to get those to get those answers and I end up with three answers. We expect to get three answers because we were working with a cubic function. Um, it is possible that we get less than three answers because we could have a bracket that's squared and then you end up with the same answer twice. But we can't get more than three answers. 
because that is the maximum we can we can get with a cubic function. I hope you all now know how to factorize polynomials of degree 3, so cubic polynomials. Um, feel free to check out the other video where we learn how to do it with long division of algebraic expressions. Happy studying!